a little over halfway through the Old Testament, Ecclesiastes. This is the great book of uh, Solomon's wisdom. And the Bible said that the, the key to understanding the book of Ecclesiastes is that phrase, under the sun, under the sun. So it's man's view of man in this life. And so uh, when you read Ecclesiastes, remember that. And the old hippies back in the 60s, and early 70s, got a hold of this scripture that I'm going to read. And they was about, half of them was high, and they all got made songs out of it. And, uh, but that's not what this scripture means at all. We'll take one verse out of it and bring a message. I've been, I've been saved since I was 18 years old, and I have never heard one, I think maybe one outline on the subject you're going to hear today. I need your prayers. Uh, this will not get a lot of likes, as they call it. But uh, uh, I hope God will use it to speak to your heart. What I'm going to preach this morning is bittersweet, sort of good, sort of awful at the end. But it's true. Look at Ecclesiastes 3, verse 1. To everything there is a season, and a time to every purpose under the heaven, a time to be born, and a time to die, a time to plant, and a time to pluck up that which is planted, a time to kill, and a time to heal, a time to break down, and a time to build up, a time to weep, and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance. I'm going to stop right there this morning, pull out that one word there in verse 4, laugh. The word laugh, laughter, laughing, is in the Bible 40 times. I wonder if you've ever heard a sermon on the subject of laughter. This morning, that's exactly what I tend to do and give it to you from the, my heart. The word life, as a verb, it can be a verb or a noun, means this. What is the definition of life? The spontaneous sounds and movements of the face. That's what it says, dictionary. And the body that are instinctive expressions of lively amusement. And all that means is when you get really happy inside, it, you smile and you laugh. How did that evolve if there's no God? The ability to laugh. Uh, it's amusement. Chuckle, cackle, giggle, twitter, or snigger is what the dictionary says. As a noun, it would be howl with laughter. Cracked up, you know, split his side, rolled in the floor, stuff like that, that people use to describe the word laughter. The purest form of laughter would be a little baby. And you're playing with it when it's just in its crib and it's all happy and fed and warm and they can just laugh at you. That's a pure form. Psychologist tries to say that there's laughing chimpanzees and I, I doubt that seriously. They look like they're laughing and uh, they say that rats laugh. I doubt that very seriously. But human beings are the only thing on earth that has a sense of humor and um, they can, uh, good, you know, uh, We'll talk about that this morning. There's nothing wrong with humor. There's nothing wrong with good, clean, fun in the right context. But uh, it's not always good or healthy to laugh. Tell you the truth, in this world today, there's not really a lot to laugh about, is there? And uh, so the Bible teaches that it's better to go to the house of mourning than the house, a uh, place of laughter. Actually, Crying and being hurt will do you better in the long run than laughing and cutting up will. But I'm glad God does let us laugh sometimes. And I'm glad sometimes in life we get to laugh and enjoy family and friends and enjoy a good time. Now I want you to listen. Five different laughs in the Bible. There are five completely different types of laughter in the Bible. I give them to you now. Number one is the laughter of skepticism, of laughing as something God said. The classic example of this is in Genesis 18, 12, 13, 14, 15, when Abraham and Sarah 
were there uh, in their tent there, and God comes to Abraham. Abraham, almost 90 years old. Uh, Sarah, 80-something years old when God first came to him. She was 90 when the baby was born. He was 99. And Abraham sitting in his tent. The Lord comes and knocks on the door. The Lord comes in. They talk a little bit. And Sarah's in here in the kitchen. And obviously, she's in her kitchen, but she sort of wants to hear what's being said in the other room there. And God spoke to Abraham. He said, Abraham, about the time of life, just come, I'm going to come back and, and you're going to have a son. You're going to have a baby. Your wife is going to have a baby. Now, I mean, she's 90 years old almost. I mean, or close to 90 years old. And uh, uh, the Bible said it, it ceased to be with Sarah after, uh, after the manner of women. She could not uh, physically bear a child. So she laughs in, inside and, and laughed within herself. She laughed. And uh, she, the Lord said, uh, your wife's going to have a baby. She went, yeah, that's the life of skepticism. And finally the Lord got her in there and says, what are you laughing at? She said, I didn't laugh. Uh, she, he's inside. He said, oh yeah, you did too. I, uh, I read your mind and you laughed. That is the laughter of skepticism. It'd be like uh, you, th- this kind of laughter. You've got to be kidding me. <laughs> tell, go tell that to somebody else. Huh? That's the laughter of skepticism. That's definitely in the Bible. It's like somebody coming up and saying, you, you, you Christians are crazy. How does the blood of one Jew who was killed 2,000 years ago affect me in the year 2016 in North Carolina? That's crazy. That's the craziest thing I have heard in my life. That's the life of skepticism. You can't tell me Jesus' mother was a virgin and this Mary and Joseph story. You can't tell me. One guy laughed at a preacher and he was, a, he was an evolutionist and he said, uh, you can't tell me that you believe all the dogs in the world come from two dogs. And, uh, and the preacher said, well, that ain't nothing. You believe they all come from a rock. That's a whole lot harder to believe. And you don't know where the rock come from. Amen. That's the life of skepticism. It's ha, ha, ha. Laughing at the Bible. I, I, even in, in that kind of laughter, the Bible said in Psalm 14, 13, even in laughter, the heart is sorrowful. And a lot of that kind of laughter is definitely skeptic. Number two, let me show you this. Pay attention. There is the laughter of spiritual Victory. In Psalm 126, verse 2, the Bible said when, those, when they came back to their land, the Bible said, Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. That is the place of spiritual victory. There's a certain life that people have when they, when they got the victory that you don't have no other time. It's completely different than that first one. I'm, I'll never forget it. The first time I saw it was when I got saved. And I went to church, and I went to camp meeting, and I'd hear some old guy get up, some old redneck guy from over here in, on, in Lenore or somewhere up there in Marion, and he'd jump up and he'd say, Woo! I was an alcoholic, and I was on drugs, and the Lord saved me, glory to God. I told them all at work, and everybody just die laughing. Now, they wasn't laughing at him. They wasn't making fun of him. They was laughing because they were enjoying what he was saying. That's the life of spiritual triumph. Have you ever had that? That's good, buddy. That's good. I mean, look, sometimes we, somebody will get saved and they'll stand up and they'll be wiping tears like this and mama hugs them and daddy hugs them and, and they'll just... <laughs> huh, what, what are they laughing at? Uh, they're laughing. That's a spiritual victory life. Amen? It's, it's like people when they win, when you, when you win some kind of victory and it's best when it's clean and pure and holy. There is something about getting the victory that brings forth laughter out of us of spiritual victory. Isn't that wonderful? But uh, then there's a third one this morning. I'll give you. There's only five, so listen quick. There's a third one this morning, and it is the life, laughter of sinful merriment. The last full of sinful merriment. Now this one is told about in Ecclesiastes 7 and verse 6. The Bible says, For as the crackling of thorns under a pot, so is the laughter of a fool. Now, what does that mean? You're cooking, you're cooking something, boiling on a big pot, and you've got thorns and briars under there, cracking and thorns. So is the laughter of a fool. 
the fool's laugh out there this morning. That is the laughter of spiritual merriment. Now, what does that mean? The nightclubs, the bars, the honky-tonks. Late-night TV is the perfect example of the laughter of fools. You know, uh, uh, fun is totally different from joy and happiness. It's like, it's like people laughing on the Titanic as it was going down. The laughter of fools. The laughter of sinful merriment. Now do you realize this morning that millions and millions of dollars, big money, is paid by people for somebody. People will even hire somebody. Big shots when they have when they have a get together, they will hire somebody to come in and stand up and tell jokes and make a laugh. We like to laugh. We enjoy life, and it makes us feel good. So we say, "Make me laugh." Uh, a lady said one time she fell in this. She fell in love with a beautiful lady. She fell in love with this guy. His face would scare a freight train and make it take a side road. I mean, that's the ugliest fellow you ever seen. Somebody said, why do you fell in love with him? She said, he makes me laugh. He makes me laugh. She liked that feeling. Somebody make me happy. Well, I'll pay you. That's how Johnny Carson makes a living. That's how David Letterman made a living. That's how uh, Red Skelton, many of you don't remember Red Skelton, that old boy died drunk, or they said drunk most of his life, and most of them die a miserable death trying, being paid to make people laugh all of their life. Robin Williams, as you just, you just committed suicide not long ago, was paid uh, to make people laugh. I'm going to let you hear uh, maybe a little bit of him in just a moment. Jack Benny, George Burns, Jimmy Kimmel, John Stewart, all of these. I'm telling you, I, I can't stand, I can't stand to even see one of them. Ain't. When I turn some TV on, and it's one of these guys, and he's sitting behind the desk, and the audience is full, and he brings in some old wicked, and they tell dirty jokes, and it's dark and smoky looking. They got a band playing. That is the laughter, my friend, of sinful merriment. The Titanic is going down, and they don't even realize it. That is the laughter of fools. That's the laughter of a fool. I'm joking and telling ungodly things. That's the scripture that says in Luke 6:25. Woe unto them that life now, for they shall weep. Now, get that first one ready for me there, number three, Noah. And I want him to head there. You're going to hear on the last Johnny Carson show when Robin Williams was on. I'm going to, let you, I'm going to illustrate what I mean by the laughing of fools or sinful merriment. You got it? All right, hit that right now. This is the laughter of fools. Go ahead, real loud. They didn't come with bullets, which is always an, an interesting thing. They couldn't find them. They couldn't find them, so they're out in the streets going, All right, everybody, we are the world. Uh, it's a difficult thing. Oh, yeah, but you know. They said they saw BMWs pulling up to the radio shack. That must be great. <laughs> oh, God, that was fabulous. This is great. <laughs> I wonder if we can get right, what you just heard there. That's the laughter of fools. You say, well, brother, ain't that so funny? Not like to hear any laughing. Listen, brother, that's the laughter of fools. That's not a sinful merriment. You know why they joke about the Bible and life? You know why? Because people are scared to death of ridicule. And when you go to work and you say I'm a Christian, they say, you're a Christian. People can't stand that. Americans are so thin skinned and so babyish, they cannot stand somebody to laugh at them. So one of the devil's biggest trick is to poke fun at the Bible and life and make fun of it. I'm going to tell you this morning, they mocked the Savior. They laughed at him. They said he was crazy. And the Bible said in James 4, 9, let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to heaviness because people don't understand that's the laughter of fools. The laughter of sinful merriment. Number four. I'll show you another one. Robin Williams said that there was no devil. It's just God when he's drunk. You say, I think that's kind of funny. That shows your heart ain't right. If your heart was right, you wouldn't think that was funny. You know you can tell a lot about a person by what they laugh at. You can tell a lot of person by what they think is funny and what they think is not funny. I was up here telling jokes about your mother, you wouldn't like it. And Jesus Christ has done more for you than your mother. He died on the cross to pay for your sins. 
Watch it, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to let you hear another one in a minute. Number four. Number four is in Luke 6.21. It's the laughter of eternal triumph. The laughter of eternal triumph. The Bible said in Luke 6, in verse 21, Blessed are you that weep now, for ye shall laugh. You know what he's talking about? James, or, or uh, Psalm 30 and verse 5, Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. He's talking about all these old grandmas and saints of God that had it hard all their life, and they, they tried to live right. They did right. They served God. They were maybe poor, maybe didn't have nothing, persecuted, laughed at, made fun of. Everybody said, well, you crazy old thing. Won't you come and party with us? No. Won't you go get drunk with us? No. Won't you get high with us? No. And the world laughed at them. Oh, you know what the Lord said? He said one of these days when they get to life, the, I mean, the shoe's going to be on the other foot. I can imagine a grandma that served God all of her life had to wind up raising her grandkids, you know, like women have to do now. You meet them all the time having to raise grandkids and persecuted, never had no new car. Uh, my mom and dad, my mom never owned a new car in her life. My daddy didn't either. Some of them had it hard. I mean, they had it hard. And I can't imagine those grandma when her street, uh, her streets of gold open up and her feet hit them streets. Lord, you talk about a laugh, brother. The Bible said in Psalm 126 and verse 2, it's joyful laughter. It's a victorious shout of the victorious Christian who by the grace of God has overcome the world and reached that place of permanent sinlessness, permanent rest, permanent peace, permanent power, permanent presence of the Lord. You talk about a holy life, brother. When we get the glory, we'll walk them straight and say, ha, ha, woo, finally made it. Home at last, home at last. That is the laughter of eternal triumph. It's the place of permanent joy, and it'll last forever and ever and ever. And we'll sing, join in on that hallelujah chorus. Hope you're listening to it this Christmas. And He shall reign forever and ever. I've always played that song. And uh, I mean, I think it's Corey one time when she was little. Uh, she come in one time and she said, Daddy, she said, why is it going to rain forever? I said, What? She said, it's going to rain forever. And I said, no, it ain't. She said that in that song, said it shall rain forever and ever. No, 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 no. It means rain, the other kind of rain. He'll be in charge. He'll be the boss man. He'll be in control of everything. And if you love the Lord Jesus Christ this morning, you talk about happy when you finally get into his presence and we come back in the millennium and the Lord rules this earth and you rule with him and then we live in that new city forever. Never, 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 and ever. Hallelujah, brother. If there's any God inside you, that'll pull it out, and you'll have the laughter of eternal triumph. A merry heart doeth good like a medicine. You cheer somebody up, up, it's just a little bit of heaven. You know, that victorious life, like Hallelujah Howard coming. You know what I'm saying? You know, he comes in there, he's always laughing. He ain't making fun of nobody, he's happy. That's the laughter of eternal. Them people that you heard in there a while ago, that's a, that's a scary sort of a laugh. Did you hear that laughter on that old, that old show a while ago? When you turn that TV on and there's one of them comedians standing in front of a brick wall, you, I hope you ain't got HBO or nothing like that, but you ought, you ought to get rid of it if you do. And, and, if you, and you see on the Internet and somebody's telling dirty jokes and they're cussing to try to get a laugh, that's not the laughter that you want to get involved in. All right? What have I said? I said, number one, there's the laughter of skepticism, Sarah. Number two, there's the laughter of spiritual victory when you get right with God. Number three, there's the laughter of sinful merriment. John Stewart, Dave Letterman, the late show, the late, late show, and fools standing and mocking God. Number four, there's the laughter of eternal triumph. If I want to get to this this morning. This is the one most people would never believe. What I'm getting ready to show you in your Bible, 90% of Americans reject. What I'm showing you in the Bible right now, most churches don't even believe. Most preachers never say. It's the laughter of condemnation from God. The Bible teaches that there will come a time when as judgment day falls, 
and people cast into hell, God will laugh at them. You say, I don't believe it. That's the difference between me and you. I believe the Bible. You don't. Take your Bible and turn to Proverbs chapter 1. Look at it. Look at your Bible. You just claim to believe it or you just a Christian because it fits in good with your job? Proverbs chapter number 1. While you're doing that, I'm going to give you some other ones. Psalm 2 and verse 4 says, He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. Now, ladies and gentlemen, they're a laugh in their heads off this morning, but one day they ain't going to laugh, and God is. And the old saying is, He who laughs last, laughs best. The old saying is, He had the last laugh. Look at Proverbs chapter number 1. Look at this warning from God. He said this. Look at it. Verse number uh, 24. Proverbs 1, 24. Because I have called and you refused. I stretched out my hand and no man regarded. But you have said it not all my counsel and would none of my reproof. I also will laugh at your calamity, I will mock when your fear cometh. When your fear cometh as desolation and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind, when distress and anguish cometh upon you, then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me, for that they hated knowledge and did not choose a fear of the Lord. I hate to tell you this this morning. It puts a fear and reverence in my heart for God, but the day's going to come that the world's going down. The world's going to be turned into hell, and they're going to say, but wait a minute, God, wait a minute, God and God will laugh at them just like they're laughing at Him now. That's not the God you, some of y'all believe in. The God some people believe in is a nice, polite, wonderful, loving, and we've invented this God that would never get mad and never did. He said, I'll laugh, I'll mock when your fear cometh. Are you listening? Are you listening to me? All right. You realize what people have gone through? The wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Romans 1.18 Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God showed them to them. You know what that verse is saying? You know what that verse is saying? People deliberately ignored him. They rode past churches for 30 and 40 years. They spent every Friday, Saturday night in a nightclub getting drunk. They partied. They shacked up. They laughed at everything he said. They mocked at what he said. And one day at the great white throne, the angel will take them and get ready to cast them into hell. And the Lord says, Ha! You say, Brother Danny, I never pictured God like that. Well, let's look a little more in Scripture. Let's look a little bit more in the Scripture. When the right wine press is full, the cup of indignation runs over. All the cussing, all the joking, all the parties, all the rape, all the murder, his long suffering will then end, my friend. I've preached for years, and I show on video. I've got tons of stuff at home where I do video presentations on rock musicians taking the stage and literally mocking God. And some of them you can't even show in church because they're cussing Jesus Christ and calling him every imaginable filthy name you can think of. Blank God! Blank God! Blank Jesus! That's this world! Do you realize how people have been treated in this world, people? You need a good smack into reality once in a while? Do you realize what's going on? Do you realize while you rode in your nice car to church and ate plenty of food yesterday and eat again this morning that a lot of the world don't get to live like you live? You know what they've done to Christians before? They bury them in the sand. They bury them in the sand up to their neck and put honey all over their faces and head and then turn jars full of army ants loose on them. Let the ants start biting them and eating at their face. So they eat, eat it off. Then I, I, the guy screams for three days, and ants go in one eye and come out the other before he dies. 
God sits there in heaven saying, please, come to me, get saved. In Germany, they'd tie a guy's hand behind his back in them concentration camps and stick an eight-inch probe inside him and punch his intestines with them. That's just a little bit. You ever had a kidney stone? Kidney stone would feel like a picnic compared to that. And God was long-suffering and let it go, let it go. In Vietnam, they'd tie their hands behind them and they'd put a bird cage over their head, tie it up and put rats, rats in there. Let the guy, let them eat the guy's face off. He's screaming there two or three days before he finally died. Blood and, and, and rats. What a way to go. That's man. That's the progress of mankind. That's these wonderful. You know, in Germany... You know them educated people that done that? Some of the highest intelligence worked for Hitler. That's how man goes without God. And then they get on the radio and make fun of God. I'll give you some quotes. A bumper sticker I saw. Sorry I missed church Sunday. I was practicing witchcraft and being a lesbian. Quote, religion is a joke. Quote, people too stupid to understand science and too lazy to think for themselves. That's what they call Christians. Quote, Andrew Carnegie, Carnegie Hall, New York, I don't believe in God. My God is patriotism. All thinking men are atheists, Ernest Hemingway. George Bernard Shaw, the faith of believers being happier than, than sinners are the same as a drunk man being happier than a sober man. He just don't know what he's talking about. Rock songs. What if God was one of us? Just a slob like one of us. And the Lord sits there and sits there day after day, week after week, year after year. Folks, I'm telling you, when he finally lets go, you better hope you ain't in the way. You better hope you ain't in the way. Kathy Griffin stands in Hollywood. You've seen me. She takes that little Emmy or Grammy or whatever it is and she stands and raises it up like this and everybody dies laughing. And she says, some people come up here and thank Jesus for this award. I want you to know that nobody had less to do with this than Jesus. So, and then she says, blanket, Jesus. This award is my God now. And they all laugh. I'm telling you something, the day's going to come. The day will come. The day will come. Ted Turner, who owned CNN and Turner Broadcast it for a long time. I don't think he does now, but I started out. He said, I've had a few drinks and a few girlfriends. If that's going to put me in hell, so be it. Let's party. Let's life cut up. Oh, yeah? Get that number. One ready. Noah. Bill Maher said that the most ridiculous, silly story, story he's ever heard in his life was the virgin birth and Jesus coming that we celebrate here at Christmas time. All I can say is, behold the goodness and the severity of God. God's awful good. They ain't a one of us could just sit back and let him do that without stopping it. But I'm going to tell you something, son, when he finally does. When God's wrath is finally poured out, you better hope and pray to God you're on the right side. All right? Listen to this. Wow. Oh, that there's an invisible man <laughs> living in the sky who watches everything you do every minute of every day. And the invisible man has a special list of ten things he does not want you to do. And if you do any of these ten things, he has a special place full of fire and smoke and burning and torture and anguish where he will send you to live and suffer and burn and choke and scream and cry forever and ever till the end of time. But he loves you. <laughs> ha ha ha, very funny, right? Very funny. All right? Give me some volume on this thing, please. Let's take our Bibles. Did it go out? 
I want to show you another verse of Scripture. Let's look at another verse of Scripture here. Psalm 37. And I'm going to show you this and I'll be through. Psalm 37. The day God laughs. The day God laughs, people. Psalm 37. And if you would, please, look at verse number 12. Psalm 37, 12. The wicked plotteth against the just. What you just got through listening to. The wicked plotteth against the just and gnasheth on him with his teeth. Verse 13. The Lord shall laugh at him, for he sees his days are coming. Now, if you got a problem with that, you got a problem with him, not me. Don't write me emails, all you people on the internet, and say I don't love people. I love people enough to tell you the truth. And God is not an old Santa Claus sitting in heaven that's just going to let everything go. The day is coming in life. Can you imagine? God is dead. The Bible's a lie. Ha, ha, ha. All you preachers are hypocrites. Ha, ha, ha. What a joke. Ha, ha, ha. Judgment of God. Angel, take him, bind him hand and foot, and cast him into everlasting fire. Ha, ha, ha. That's how much he hates sin. That's how much he hates sin. You say, I don't love a God like that. You got one choice. If you hate him, you know where you're going to wind up? You're going to wind up in hell, buddy. Forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. I will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh. God is dead. Yeah, whatever. The wicked plots against the righteous and seeks to destroy him. The wine press is full. The cup runs over. It's filled to the brim. God loves you this morning. Right now, he cared enough about you to let his son die on the cross for your sins. And he'll save you and forgive you right now today. But you've got to understand, the day's going to come when mercy's over and judgment starts. And he who laughs last will laugh best. You know what makes people keep on sinning? They get away with it a day or two, another day or two, another day or two. They say, well, I've been doing this for some years. Nothing ain't happened. What that is, it's the long suffering of God. God sat in heaven last night and watched them light life at him all over this world. Last night, Friday night, Christmas parties that turned into orgies and drunken mess. And the Lord just sat there. That's his long suffering. But he's storing up wrath. And the day's going to come when he'll let go. That's laughter in the Bible. You want a life last? Get your heart right with God. And get in the Lord and life with us in heaven one day when we have the victory forever and ever and ever. Let's stand by our head for prayer. Every head bowed. Every eye closed.